Just like we humans make choices based on various factors, cells also figure out things for themselves. These tiny building blocks of life decide whether to divide or not. And it turns out they rely not only on outside signals, like growth cues, but also on information they get from within. Our senses help us gather information about the world around us. Our brain puts all this information together to understand what's going on. This is a bit like how a cell gathers information to make important decisions, such as whether to multiply. Scientists at the University of Zurich have found out that cells make decisions more independently than we used to believe. For this, cells use a sort of multiple senses approach. They combine information from the outside, like growth signals, with what's happening inside, such as the number of cell parts. Sometimes, what's happening inside the cell is more important than outside signals. For example, in harmful masses in the body, the cell's own state can be more powerful than the effect of certain medicines, making the mass resistant to treatment. Understanding how cells respond to their environment could help solve problems like this in the future. The researchers tested this by looking at many cells at once. They checked how different parts of cells work and how they reacted to the environment. They used a special method called 4J to look at different proteins in cells using special light. Bernard Kramer, the main researcher, said they could look up to 80 different things happening in a single cell at the same time. The way individual cells respond to their environment is closely connected to what's going on inside them. For instance, how many energy-producing parts a cell has affects how it understands signals from outside. Different parts inside a cell also pay attention to different things. When the researchers looked at how cells decided to grow or remain static, they saw that they made these choices by taking in lots of information from both inside and outside. It's not just the cells living in our bodies. Tiny living things that are made up of just one cell might be smarter than we give them credit for. Scientists often think how these cells act. It's like pre-programmed behavior, like a computer following a set of instructions. But the studies suggest that these cells might actually make decisions hmm. instead of just following orders. Some cells might have a way to choose how they react to certain things. This is a new way to think about cells. I mean, the idea isn't totally new. About 100 years ago, scientist Herbert Spencer Jennings conducted an experiment involving tiny trumpet-shaped organisms called stentor rizale. He saw that when these organisms were bothered by something, they didn't always react the same way. They did different things, like curling up or swimming away as if they were making a choice. But later, other scientists tried to repeat this experiment, and they didn't have the same results. Everyone thought Jennings was wrong. They said that cells couldn't choose, they just reacted automatically. Was he wrong? Well, botanist Gunnar Wardena didn't believe that. He discovered that the latter experiment hadn't even used the right type of organism. Gunnar Wardena and his team decided to conduct the experiment again. This time, they filmed the cells and used tiny plastic beads to irritate them instead of the chemicals that had been used before. And the cells did show different reactions just like Jennings had described. The fascinating thing was that some cells reacted differently each time they were irritated. It was almost as if every time they made a decision about how to react in different scenarios. This is pretty amazing, because we usually think that only big or complex animals can make decisions. But these tiny cells do something similar. And this might change our views on diseases and their development. So, even though cells don't really have thoughts like us, they might be making choices in their own tiny cellular way. We worry about all sorts of stuff and sometimes overthink. Maybe being a cell would be just perfect. Dr. Robin Araujo has tackled a long-standing enigma about the intricate inner workings of cells. She has introduced new mathematical concepts to uncover the mystery of how cells' complex biological networks can adjust and reorganize themselves when exposed to new triggers. Her discoveries offer a fresh understanding of how cells communicate and possess a form of thinking. This newfound insight could be valuable for various fields, including disease treatment and drug resistance. While we possess considerable knowledge about gene sequences, our understanding of how proteins encoded by these genes collaborate as a cohesive network has been quite limited until now. 
The complexity of cellular networks is so immense that it's impossible to measure. These networks are vast and interconnected, and the proteins they consist of show significant variability. Yet mathematics provides a tool that can help us investigate how these networks might be structured to function effectively. Dr. Araujo's work specifically delved into an observed phenomenon called perfect adaptation – the ability of a network to reset itself after encountering a new stimulus. Think of it like our sense of smell. We smell freshly baked cakes when we enter a bakery. But after some time, the smell seems to disappear, even though the source, those yummy pastries, are still there. This adaptive mechanism is not unique to our sense of smell. It's a recurring process within living cells. Cells experience various signals, such as hormones and growth factors, and their proteins initially react and respond before settling into a state similar to how they were before the stimulus. The research analyzed potential ways networks could be constructed to achieve perfect adaptation. She found that networks must adhere to specific mathematical principles to show this property. Interestingly, there is only a limited number of ways networks can be built for perfect adaptation. Now, what about neurons, those amazing structures in our brain? This organ is composed of around 80 billion nerve cells, over 10 times the number of people living on Earth. Neurons act like messengers, using special chemicals called neurotransmitters to communicate with one another. Think of neurotransmitters as the brain's chemical words, transmitting messages between neurons. Neurons come in diverse forms, shapes, and sizes. But you can imagine a neuron as a tree for simplicity. A neuron consists of three main parts – the cell body, axion, and dendrites. The cell body is like the tree trunk, housing genetic information like DNA in its nucleus. It's also the factory producing neurotransmitters for communication. The dendrites, the branches of our metaphorical neuron tree, receive signals. They were initially thought to work like antenna, just picking up signals. However, they're more versatile than that. Each neurotransmitter fits only its unique receptor, similar to a key fitting a lock. Depending on the neurotransmitter, it either stimulates or inhibits the other neuron, making it more or less likely to send its own action potential. This process, happening at lightning speed up to 223 miles per hour, is often called wired transmission. It's like whispered secrets, passed directly from one neuron to another, conveying timely and localized messages. Some neurotransmitters, particularly neuropeptides, are different. Neuropeptides, a special kind of neurotransmitter, are released from various parts of a neuron, including dendrites. Instead of getting released into a synapse, they diffuse in the brain's fluid, influencing receptors located far away. This process is slower than synapse signaling, like walking through a forest. Neuropeptides are like a Wi-Fi signal, reaching multiple brain areas but only affecting those with the right receptors. This kind of signaling is a wireless communication, a public announcement from one group of neurons to another. Research opens up a new way of thinking about cellular behavior. This potentially leads humanity to transformative breakthroughs in multiple domains like health. Who knows? Maybe we decode ourselves 100% and upgrade to level 2 of humanity.